uh, this session. There you go. Uh, so we can, uh, you know, start having conversations around, uh, you know, the different programs that we have. But please uh, be free to actually post, uh, you know, any comments, questions in the uh, in the box, you know, in the chat box. And uh, we are be we are going to be more than happy uh, to answer uh, any of the questions that you may have. Uh, so first of all, uh, you know, most of people always uh, reach us out because of the different uh, programs uh, that we have. Some people are interested in immigration, some people are not interested in immigration and they are just uh, interested in expanding. And, uh, you know, just to feel the sense here in the room, I would like you to use the emojis. Maybe you can let me know, um, you know, who is interested in immigration and having a company in Canada. You can raise your hand just, you know, with the emoji. Or even open your mics if you wanna if you wanna talk. Yeah, you Feel can. Free. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, or give, okay. So there we go. Couple of you guys. Uh, okay. Yes. So. Great. Yeah. So so we'll be passing right. information about that, and uh, anyone here interested just in expanding, um, you know, companies into North America. You maybe can give the thumbs up or. You know, raise your hand. Nice, Laura is there. Okay, Mark Adventure. Nice. Nice, and Sayed. Okay, perfect. Okay, guys. Uh, so, and, and Claudia as well. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so, I'm going to start, you know, uh, kind of like, uh, giving you some information about the programs and why the programs are made this way, you know, uh, I'm going to start with the most popular again. <laughs> For those that were interested in the immigration process, I'm going to start talking about what is the start a visa program. Which information is here. You can see that uh, uh, sometimes it's a lot to actually uh, take uh, from, uh, you know, the, the content perspective. And, uh, you know, this program was designed by the government of Canada to uh, help international tech startups uh, to land in Canada to grow their business and as well obtain a permanent residence. And designated organizations like us, um, and, you know, play a role into all this process, basically by betting the companies. We are responsible to make sure, um, you know, that uh, companies actually meet the criteria and we are also responsible to help you, uh, you know, to land in Canada business-wise and expand your business. Um, so there is a different criteria here, but the most important part is to understand that every designated organization uh, of the Star Visa program has a uh, different criteria and a different way to work this. Okay, so the government basically is trusting um, designated organizations to say, how they want to make sure that the companies actually meet the government criteria to obtain permanent residence. So being said that, uh, you know, most of the criteria we have here is matching with the government in our process to know if the company is actually good for this uh, particular program is to actually go first into uh, something that we call the market entry program which is the three months program uh, where we are basically working with the company to understand the technology that you're bringing to Canada, understand the business model. And uh, being very honest with you, many times it's changing also the business model. Um, so business models, depending where you are, you know, may work very well in emerging markets, but many times in North America, is not actually uh, working at the level that uh, you may expect. Um, in particular, the, the situation is because you are coming from an emerging market to a mature market. And for this reason, this program in particular help us to understand better. And yeah, it's also helping the companies not to make an investment right away in a start visa program if the company is not going to be a fit for that one. There, there are many type of visas in the market, uh, so you shouldn't be pursuing this one if you actually don't meet that criteria. So part of the criteria also is that we are seeking that the company will be having a corporation in Canada for sure, 
you know, we work national wise. Sometimes, uh, you know, companies are a little bit afraid that we are just working uh, in Ontario, but we do have companies in British Columbia, in, uh, you know, in, uh, um, I forgot, <laughs> Manito. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so we have companies in in different other places. The only um you know province that is not uh, Newfoundland is what I was going to say. Um, yeah, so the only province that doesn't work the start visa program just because the province works in a different level is Quebec. Okay, so if you want to be, for example, uh, living and and working from Quebec. Uh, this program is not for you because Quebec has a different type of immigration process. Uh, but other than that, we work with uh, the whole uh, country, whatever you know the company wants to be la located. Um, of course, majority of our companies are still in Ontario, and you know companies are also required to have intellectual property, uh, which is uh, one of the main questions. Many times, you know, uh, we have that question: What do you mean with intellectual property? What do we have to have? And, you know, and why is that the government is pursuing that? Um, and the first thing, you know, intellectual property, we are talking about copyrights or patents. Uh, we are not talking necessarily about trademarks. That's, that's a little bit too basic uh, for this program. But if you are able to actually protect uh, your code, uh, if you have a software company, or if you have a device and you will be able in some point to claim a patent, then uh, you know the minimum we require is to develop an intellectual property strategy. That again, uh, that intellectual property strategy happens in the market entry program. So we have lawyers and people that will help the company to develop that strategy. And in a startup visa, uh, we are aiming that the company will actually uh, be able to implement that strategy. Uh, the other requirement, uh, of course, uh, from government is that you have minimum financial stability to actually move uh, uh, to Canada. And many people also, uh, you know, confuse this with uh, how much is, is the funds to be living in Canada or working in Canada. In this case, uh, for example, we are just talking about um, the financial stability for your company, no for living in Canada. So that's the operational part, uh, you know, of the company. Uh, so for that reason, you know, depending on what type of company you are bringing, maybe the budget that you're presenting makes sense. Some other times it doesn't. But of course, uh, you know, for companies that are entering into the program, uh, we are evaluating that from the be very beginning. So believe me, uh, we don't accept companies into the market entry program if we don't believe that they have an opportunity to enter to a visa program. At the end of the market entry program, what we do is to have a presentation with an advisory board. And, you know, they basically look at the company from the government perspective and they will be basically, uh, you know, rating the company and see, you know, if they actually meet all the criteria. And if the company does, then, you know, they enter to start a visa program and then everything deploys from there. This is a six months program and we are working very close with the government of Canada. As you can see around here, probably we work with FedEx Ontario. We work with the city of Toronto and uh, uh, basically they are helping us, you know, to provide an extra funding for uh, the program. Companies pay for this program, but, you know, the government put a little bit more on them so they can help uh, you know to uh, to navigate all the challenges that companies have the first year. Um, so I'm pretty sure that maybe you have questions in regards of you know permanent residence and work permits or uh, you know anything uh, in regards of this program. So I just want to be mindful to stop here for a minute to see if anyone has questions so we can you know answer those questions in advance. Yeah. And also, if you you know we're still speaking, uh, we can answer any questions that you have in the chat. If you if you don't want to open your mics, we can you can write them down in the chat, and we can answer them as well. So mm -hmm. whatever you guys are are looking to uh, to ask your questions, just you know any way you want, we'll be here answering them. Yeah, th this is a, a this is a program that is not as easy to navigate as many other programs, and uh, you know. 
Uh, I just want to make sure that you understand that no question is a silly question here. So you can ask any question and, you know, we are going to be uh, basically answering based on our experience and, and not uh, necessarily, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, we are no lawyers, so that's a disclaimer. We are not, uh, you know, a law firm, uh, but we can answer you based on that part. Now, um, I'm going to go to any of the other programs that we have because yeah, if I think maybe, else, uh, yeah. I don't know if Anne, that you turn on your camera, you have a question? I do. Sorry, I couldn't find the hand raising. It just gave me lots of weird things. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm going yeah, to I don't know what's going on with that one. <laughs> I don't know what is going on? <laughs> yeah. Well, my business model is, is slightly different in yeah. that I'm looking to secure partnerships okay. with a, a local ambassador, if you like, who would be the majority shareholder in country. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that, yeah. Yeah. It, it wouldn't be uh, me with feet on the ground, but I would be supporting and working with somebody who's already working in this space. Mm -hmm. as a joint venture yeah uh, now that would still need support and understanding all of the criteria and the regulation uh, it's in a very specific area uh, geographically and, and sectorially so mm -hmm. is this something that you might be able to support we have I've just filed sort of last minute dot com the PCT patents for different countries and I think I was just timed out on Canada because I think you have 30 months after PCT yes. and not 31. Yeah, so managed to get the US one in, uh, but not the Canadian one. That said, it is likely that we're going to be developing new systems. So there would be further patents potentially going down the line. Sounds good. Okay, that, that's a, a shed load of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, um, that's good. Thank you for sharing. Uh, no, is but uh, are you seeking for immigration or not? Because that that program that I was talking about is more like a, for those that are seeking immigration. No, it, it would need to be sort of extended visas for working. Yeah, but it it's finding the right partnerships. So maybe it's not the right call. Yeah, yeah. No, there there are some organizations can that can help you actually with that. Um, without you entering into this process of programs and all that. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, believe me, I've been in the market, uh, you know, for long enough to know that, uh, you know, uh, getting to those joint ventures and partnerships takes a lot of time. And sometimes people really don't get to get them. And uh, the main reason why is because many times, uh, you know, locally speaking, people are seeking for somebody that is close to them uh, you know, and it, they building that relationship, you know, over the time to trust enough to have a joint venture uh, going forward. So it is, it is still kind of like a very traditional way to approach into joint ventures in the market. So it will be through uh, truly, you know, connections and partnerships that can be helpful for you. So one of the organizations that I'm thinking right now up at the head is, for example, Toronto Global. And I don't know okay. if um, I'm not sure if you have reached out to them. Uh, but we are happy to provide an uh, uh, introduction with the guys of Toronto Global. Um, they normally are helping companies that are landing in Toronto and they require to have, you know, this kind of one-on-one uh, -on -one relationship. Um, normally they don't have any costs related, you know, for companies that are, that are, you know, seeking that type of advice. And then you have uh, the, uh, the, the trade, um, what is it called, uh, JP, the... Uh, the trade organization, trade Tor the Toronto Trade uh, Toronto Board, Board of, of trade. trade. Yeah, Toronto Board of Trade. They have more like, you know, a type of program that is designed for that type of relationship. And we also are happy to have a, you know, an introduction with them so they can explain you what type of programs they have. Some of them are paid, some others are free. Uh, so the, the bottom line for them is that they can create that relationship with other people. Um, so, and of course, you know, 
we rely a lot in the trade commissioner office. Uh, they have helped us immensely over the years. Uh, so I will say that wherever you are located, you always will have a Canadian uh, trade commissioner office and they help to provide those connections as well. Um, okay. But in any case, you can shoot us a message and I'm yeah. happy to do the connection with uh, Toronto if, Global. If I put some my email in the chat, if you'd be kind enough to make those introductions, yeah, sure. that'd be fabulous. Are you, I think we I think we had a, ch a chat with you, Anne, a couple of years ago. Are you from Red Rose Developments? Yeah, yeah. How good are you? I think that's a very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember, <laughs> just remember your your business model was very unique. You had the seaweed extraction, and you were looking to work with uh, maybe Prince Edward Island in the Atlantic coast of Canada. So yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. We well, it kind of evolved now because there are so many countries with potential uh, that what we're looking to do is create a network of almost like franchise companies. So that we provide the technology, the business model, and they surprise, supply the know-how, the knowledge, the legal access, and that way it works. We're not having to do the regulatory, which you know is, is better done in country, and yeah. and the money should stay in country. That that's rather than having global domination, it should be an in-country driven uh, and profitable center for that particular country. Right. No, I, I understand that. I, I will, uh, I'm going to share this here again um, to go to the next uh, program. But and uh, if we connected before, just shoot us a message and we continue the conversation there just to, to be mindful also with the other questions we have here. <laughs> but okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm going to continue then with uh, Marty Adventure. Uh, you are asking how long should be the company uh, be operating in if a person has a business idea, but not yet operating, is there an opportunity? Well, we don't work with business ideas precisely because you know what the government wants to see normally is a little bit more complex of, uh, in, in the business ideas obviously require way more time to be developed and to actually show something that you know is is minimal meaningful to happen so we we really cannot risk on a you know working those business ideas unfortunately um the many times what happens is that depending of the type of technology we may have um you know um some uh criteria to have um, an mvp uh for example with companies are a, a, in medical devices, uh, you know, green tech, clean tech, those cases, we actually may have uh, the opportunity to see what they have before commercialization. And in those cases may may have sense. In other cases, it, it, it's, it's, unfortunately it's not. Um, so if you don't know about, you know, the technology readiness or something like that, you can, uh, again, uh, send us a message uh, with some of the description. Please don't send us business plans or pitch decks. We don't we don't have, unfortunately, the time to look at that because many times we receive four to five emails per day with inquiries about the programs, and we have a lot of other work to do as well. So we are we don't have the opportunity to actually go deeply in your business plan, and we don't want to give an incorrect answer to you. So the best thing is like uh, if you summarize in one paragraph, what is that you have and what is the technology readiness at this point, then we can have an answer more or less for you, uh, if that's okay. Uh, I hope that I answered the question, but uh, if not, just, you know, send me another note here in the chat. Um, we also have another question here is com uh, compulsory to have existing business in other country. Um, like should the star have backup uh, in any other country? Not necessarily, I will say, uh, but uh, you know, it, it will be better to have already a, an existing business because again, if you don't have an existing business, that means that you are in ideation nice. and we don't take uh, companies in ideation. <laughs> so um, let's say for our program is necessary, but it's not necessary for a start of visa. So that means that other incubators and accelerators may receive you in ideation, but not particularly us. Uh, that's what I mean to say. Um, 
Perfect. And thank you so much for sending the, uh, the information. Okay. Uh, so if any, does anyone else have any um, questions in regards of permanent residence, work permits, uh, in regards of the status visa program? Uh, please just, uh, you know, post it in the chat or raise your hand and I'm happy to answer those. Um, and I'm going to go quickly here in what are the other programs about, and I'm not going to go as deep maybe, uh, you know, as i um, talking here about the start of visa program. I'm also going to, um, uh, you know, touch base in some of the events coming up in some of the boot camps, which can be an opportunity for you guys. Boot camps are free to attend. And we certainly, uh, you know, have a more flexible criteria uh, for companies that are entering into boot camps. So just stay connected and I'll pass that information to you. We also have TED camps. So it's a lot of going on <laughs> this year. Um, so yeah, how much it takes uh, after the letter of support, the PR? Okay, so is that difficult? question to answer because during the pandemic of course you know the processing time got to up to three years to get a permanent residence so many people were actually obtaining work permits through study visa program moving with the work permit to Canada and wait in Canada for their permanent residence uh, to be obtained so the longest processing time we have had is three years exactly and the shortest processing time we have had is three months yeah three months was exceptional <laughs> it's not that that happens every day and it was previous pandemic and lately we have seen some cases that have been resolved in about year and a half so not necessary. all the cases are resolved necessary uh, after the three years. Uh, mm -hmm. um, how much is the validity for show up? Well, I don't understand that question, sorry. For, for the work for the, for the ah, permit, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, um, how long probably, uh, okay. So the work permit supposed to be right now under new conditions of the government uh, to be given for three years. Uh, so some people are uh, before the three years announcement that was during coalition conference June last year, um, war permits were given for one year and people were able to renew every time, you know, until the permanent residence was obtained. So the government June last year make an announce, made an announce, uh, announcement saying that um, the war permit um, should be now open for three years. Um, so far, we have had one of our startups that got just recently a work permit for three years, but it was a closed work permit. So if you go to the website, uh, the startup visa website, it's still saying that it's one year. So we cannot, you know, tell you because again, we are no government, um, but we can tell you what the government has said about it. Yeah, exactly what you said. Uh, in the government website, was, uh, website it says one year, um, but the announcement last year was that they are going to increase that to three years, and we have got already one of our startups actually with three years. Last year was the year that we got most of our startups actually converting all this time into permanent residence. So we were very happy to see many cases result. Um, so it, it's important to manage expectations in regards of these cases because many times people think that all depends on the letter of support and there's no way I can tell you that this depends on the letter of support. It depends on many other uh, um, uh, nuances around, you know, the start of visa that will give at the end a lot of the, the permanent residence for the person. The end mandate for us is not that you get the permanent residence. The end mandate for us is that your business grow in Canada. So if your end mandate is getting a permanent residence, you may be talking with the wrong organization. We are, of course, helping permanent residence to be obtained as part of the process, but this is a tool for us. It's not like a, our end mandate is that. Um, so, and also, you know, be mindful that nobody can charge you for the letter of support. The letter of support is free. 
once you obtain the approval from the organization, the organization should be giving you the letter of support. Whenever people are paying uh, for something is for a program because it requires for the company to actually grow in the country and requires to be run a program with the company. So in this is the case for business incubators and accelerators. It doesn't have to be the case for angel investment um, or venture capital firms, which they have some other criteria and they actually have to give an intended letter of investment of $75,000 up to $200,000 to startups. So in their case of angel investors and venture capital, they shouldn't be charging for a program. They should be investing for a program. But in the case of uh, incubators and accelerators, we do because we are mainly nonprofit organizations. So to help with the company, we need to be charging for the program, but not for the real support. So that's important for you guys. Um, Okay, so I have Sayed um, actually uh, raising the hand, so you can go ahead and open your mic. Yeah, so I had a question. Yes. Um, so basically, in the startup user program, I already have a startup, right? Yes. I start, started off about um, six months ago. Now, if I have to, and, um, you know, honestly, um, you know, my mom uh, kind of handles the administration of the startup back from another country from india right okay now is there a way that i can uh, actually include her in the startup visa program and kind of uh, you know get her a letter of support from the incubator uh, i'm already trying to work with incubators uh, in this space uh, and i've actually reached out to uh, innovation factory uh, yeah. whom i'm being onboarded onboarded as a client so how yeah. does that work i mean is there an age limit and how does how does that work yeah, as a, Canada as a permanent resident. Yeah, no, so yeah, that's a fair question. And Innovation Factory is actually one of our close partners. So we work with them as well. Uh, so I'm very happy that you are already in connection with them. But as I mentioned at the beginning, it's like every designated organization has their own way to work a startup visa program. So every organization has their own criteria. But at the end, we all have to comply with that the company is a technology company, that the company, uh, you know, has in, in enough uh, funding to operate in Canada for the first year, that you have intellectual property. Those are the type of um, uh, requirements that all organizations has to comply. Now, how they prove the government that you are complying with those organizations up to the designated organization, right? So everyone has a different style to see, you know, to make sure that the case um, is strong enough for the government not to reject. Because you can imagine that anyone can give you the letter of support, but what if you actually get the letter of support and you are in the process and three years after you get rejected? It wouldn't be a happy ending for you, nor for the designated organization either. So, you know, business-wise, we could be receiving anyone, but uh, we are not going to do that because at the end of the day, you know, we have to comply with regulations and you as well. So, and, and the system can be triggered by anything. It could be like, for example, in this case, you are telling me you want to uh, immigrate, but some other cases, I have teams, I have people that are coming, uh, there are three people, four people, a part of the Starvisa program. You have to remember up to five people can oh, yes. apply, uh, you know, five co-founders and their families get permanent residence, right? But what if one of the co-founders leave the the group, you know, during the process, process, everyone gets rejected. Yeah. So this is not an it doesn't depend of the letter of support. This kind of rejections, right? So and it doesn't depend of the business. Sometimes it depends of what is happening personally to each person. So you cannot take it as likely that I just need a letter of support. It, it requires way more than that. So either way, in Innovation Factory can do the process with you and, you know, you can see maybe that I, I believe they help from ideation. Uh, so and when they give the little support to how they give it is up to them. Um, in our case, we don't. Uh, so we don't want to risk the case, uh, you know, to be rejected. That's that's why we don't do it. So I hope that that responded to the question, Saya. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, if not, then you, you can always, you know, ask me another question. 
Well, you know, uh, moving forward here with the others, so just know, uh, you know, I'm not like uh, eh, eh, keeping you too long here. Sorry, I'm going to reshare this part. Um, um, this, these are the other programs that you have, uh, that we have in, in global startups. So we have this program for newcomers that are already here in Canada. And this program runs just once a year. Uh, we are going to start applications soon, um, opening soon, probably in, in between April and May. And this is almost fully funded by the government. So if you are already based in Canada, if you already have a PR, but you know you just obtained your PR recently or you are a new citizen in the country, this program may be very helpful and it will be very good. You know, the government is kind of funding most of the program. This program here, Go Global, is another one that is going to open up soon applications. And this is for companies that are not seeking to, um, or co-founders that are not seeking to immigrate to Canada, but they are seeking to have a second headquarters in Canada. So this is another six months program, but it's imitating basically the other two. It's just the conditions of the co-founder are different. So in this case, nobody is seeking for um, uh, you know, a permanent residence. And uh, you know, sometimes co-founders already have work permits and they are not, you know, uh, per se looking for other things, but just that. And then uh, you have the tech camps and the boot camps. We are going to have a very exciting uh, AI boot camp coming up now in April. Uh, so just, uh, you know, give us a day or two and you will be able to see it here. And it's, it's a really um, great opportunity for companies that are looking to integrate AI and cybersecurity measures into the startup. The bootcamp is going to happen in April and uh, it's going to be very exciting for us because we are working with the highest level of, uh, you know, engineers uh, from cybersecurity and NI uh, to help, you know, companies to integrate AI and to visit some of the innovation centers that just work in an AI in cybersecurity in the city. So those that want to participate in that, we are going to we are going to send information about that. And then, you know, we have also boot camps, uh, some boot camps that are happening uh, now in uh, the first uh, semester and some others in the second semester. So some boot camps are for agricultural technology, food, food tech companies, or uh, manufacturing uh, technology type of companies. These boot camps are free, guys. So anyone that has to be or would like to text, test the waters, you know, in Canada, how your technology could be, and you may be, you know, interested later on in a set of visa or any, any of these other programs, this can, this can be a very good way to enter to the market and, and you know, not paying anything. And, uh, you know, basically uh, create your first connections in the market. So just again, um, look at this uh, probably later today. You are going to find a lot of information there about the two boot camps we are having uh, up to now. We may have a third one coming up, but so far we have one in the spring, one in fall, and we are very excited uh, you know, to be collecting companies for these boot camps as well. And finally, this is the final part of the conversation, just not to keep you up for more time, but again, if you are having any questions, uh, please just put it in the chat, I'm happy to answer while I'm sharing the other part of the information. We have a lot of events. Uh, you can see the info session we have today. We have, sorry, we have, uh, you know, our annual event coming up. This is the 11th edition and it's going to be during Coalition Conference. Um, so if you guys want to become a part of this, uh, just sign up for, for the event. Uh, we are going to have also our lessons learned uh, back in, now in February. Uh, so we are going to have, a, you know, a hosting um, startups in our uh, office uh, this February. And uh, we'll be showing up three of our startups that have passed through our programs and basically sharing with you guys the challenges and opportunities they have seen in the market through the programs. So that's it for now. And, uh, you know, if you really want to, uh, you know, continue the conversation with us, just, uh, you know, send us an email. Again, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Try to be as much as you can, very particular 
about your questions uh, because many times they can be very vague and understandable for sometimes those questions. But, uh, you know, we need to know a little bit better, you know, about your cases to answer better. Uh, and again, please don't send those documents because we are not able to open those documents. Applications are now open for the market entry program, which is the program that is linked with the Stata Visa program. Those applications are closing in January 25th. Uh, so if you are aiming to enter now in March, uh, then you know you should be uh, working up in your application. Uh, and if you have any questions about the application, please reach us out. Well, I don't see any other uh, questions here or any other person that wants to actually uh, ask anything. So I'm going to close uh, you know, the meeting right now here. I thank you everyone uh, for staying here uh, during this session. And again, any questions or comments, just send us a note. Thank you so much. Yeah. I already put the, our emails, uh, Miriam, just in case if they have something, because I know it's, it was a lot of information to take on. So yeah. yeah. We can keep the conversation going after we, we close the meeting. Thank you so yeah. much for being here, guys. Thank you, guys. See ya. Bye. Bye, Mike.